Hi, I'm Larry. Welcome back to my studio and our project here is an acrylic painting of pots. I've, I've kind of focused in on the the upper portion portion of this. We'll get to the pots in a minute, but I want to come back and finish this up before I start putting things in front of it. Now, one of the things I like to do, and I'll bring my my board up here, is I like to do a, and not in all circumstances, but in, in many circumstances, I want to add a little bit of mist to things, like dust or fog or, you know, just, just some atmosphere. And I want to do that with this. I'm going to take a little bit of yellow that's got some orange in it as well. It's just kind of dirty color off of my palette. And I'm also going to take some gesso, which is my white, and water. I want to make this thin. Okay, I'm going to just take some water and thin this down. This is one of the few times that I will tell you to use a lot of water. But what I'm doing, and this is my number, uh, it's my number six, I believe, flat bristle brush. And I'm working that in, in there. And then I'm going to take some of that excess water out. So this is a dry brush technique. And so the brush does need to be dry. I'll be using just the corner of this and very little pressure. And I'm going to make a series of, of just little, little circles over this. What this does is it, it'll add like a little bit of hazy sunlight coming into our sunlight section there. It'll also kind of push things that are behind it back. So I'll just move this off or reload here off of this. I would normally do this in the palette, but I can't switch back and forth since I, I'm my only only camera operator. So I'm going to take that, move it. I'll just keep it off to the side if I need to reload. want to wipe out any excess water and very lightly come back in here and just just in this 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 sunlit area just add this little bit of of mist or haze you know, there could be some dust in the air. I'm just reloading, picking up some more paint. Wipe it out so there's not too much in there. And then just come back in and, and just kind of soften that area. It just pushes it back a bit create some softer lines. This is great if you're like doing landscapes and you need to add dust or some mist or fog. Practice this. Okay, so it, a little bit more right in here. Okay, now the other thing I want to do while I'm, you know, before I start working on this you know, on, on the leaves and stuff that are going to be in front of this, is that I want to come in and I want to just add some suggestion of some leaves up in the trees. I want to get those done before I start working on the, the plants in front of it. So I'm using my, my blue and my hooker's green and to that, I'm going to add just a touch of white. I just want to make it just a little bit lighter than what's there. So I have kind of this soft blue-green color. If you look in shadows, you'll see that there, you'll find a lot of blue-greens. Let me add a little more white so you can see it. Because this will dry a little bit darker. And I can always go back in and touch it if, if I need to when I'm, you know, 
if I plan on keeping it. So let's try. Okay, there we go. Now, one of the things, if you have phthalo blue, phthalo blue also is a is a good color. Add just a little touch of of white to that. This just just suggests that there's some leaves. I'm just scumbling. I'm just using the the corner of my brush and suggesting. I'm not trying to paint anything definite. I'm just suggesting some shapes in there. There's uh, because we have an atmosphere. Light scatters, and so you'll see a lot of reflected light up in, in the trees and in the shadows and things. So just by adding, just, and I'm, I'm not finding any rhyme or reason, I'm just coming in and just putting those, those in there. Some of it will get covered up, some of it will show. Oops, no. Okay, see, I, I got a, found a part that I had a little bit too much. Just come up and wipe it off. Don't panic on any of that. Just add a little bit extra on that part of my brush. Move, move that around. Okay, I know some of this is going to be behind. So that's about all I, I wanted to, to do. On that so now basically that's the underpainting for the trees and I'm going to take and cut away here so I can re refocus on on the pots that are below this now I also want to remind you that I'm I'm showing you how I would paint if you don't want to do any of this don't you know, make it make it your own. You get to make decisions as a as an artist, as a painter. If you don't want to do the the haze in the back, that's fine. If you don't want to put the little leaves there, or if you want to make them a greener color, that's also fine. But I'm showing you how I paint, and that's all any instructor or teacher can show you is what they know. And they are trying to pass that information on to you. So you have to take what they teach you and, and you get to decide what you're going to do with your own painting. So let me cut away and I'll be right back. Okay, now that I've reset my camera, I want to show you this before I, I show you what I've done. These are the pots. We've got a lot of sun on this one, not so much sun on that one. We're going to be brush blending in here, but everything we're doing at this point is still underpainting. I have not added the, the legs to the, the stand that this pot is on. I'll do that later so that I don't have to worry about painting around anything on this pot. This one I like, it's got a little bit of paint on around the top of it. So I have freehanded this. This is just white chalk like I did up here. It's just white chalk and I put in what I'm going to be doing. I have not put in any of the, the plants. There'll be plants that come over into this. We'll have shadows, we'll have more sunlight. But right now what I wanna do is get these underpainted. Everything needs to be underpainted. It's the foundation of what you're, what you're painting. So also be aware when you're, when you're doing this that even though this one is up higher because it's off the ground and on this stand, the bottom of this is still lower than the bottom of that. Be very aware when you are drawing about perspective because that perspective gives you distance. So this one is in front. These two pots were almost the same size, but this one sits back, well, maybe a foot, foot and a half from where this one was. So it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bit higher in the, in the, um, canvas. I'm, I'm going to be placing this up here where I can look at it. 
If you don't have a reference and you want one, you can go to my my blog spot and you'll find a, a link there that'll take you to where I have not only the reference material, but if you're afraid of drawing, I have a, a just a drawing of, of the pots. And there's also uh, links in the blog spot for um, a couple of different programs to enlarge this. So you can make it, this is a 16 by 20 canvas that I'm working on. You know, so if you want to make it that big, you can use one of those programs. It's one of them's poster and the other one is a uh, razor poster. Razor poster is for Macs. And I'm, not, I'm just saying that because not everybody has a, you know, a, an enlarger in their computer. And those two are fairly easy to use and they're reasonably priced. And I think one of them is even free. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out on this back one. I'm going to take my, my burnt sienna. Okay, my burnt sienna. I'm going to add some orange to it. And maybe a little bit of, of I've got orange and I've got some uh, cadmium red in there. And I'm going to mix these. right on the canvas. This is called brush mixing. Now maybe that's a little bit too bright. Pick up some more of the burnt sienna. And I'm just gonna, this is my number six, I'm just gonna pull in on that edge. Don't go all the way outside of the the chalk. That will pull off, you know, wipe off later. But I just want to make that edge so that it's soft. Kind of scumble this around. A little more orange, a little more burnt sienna. Come in, do the same thing up here. Some of that will be hidden because of the plants. But I'm just going to pull that around. Going to add a little bit more burnt sienna to that. And just blend it in with the, the brush. It doesn't need to be a perfect blend. If you look at, at the photograph, you'll see that it has a lot of, there's some, a pattern on there that I am not going to do. Come over here. That was just some orange that I picked up. It's it's like when you're using um, things like red or burnt sienna or something like that. It's almost a little better to use a lighter color like orange or yellow to add highlights than it is to come in and add white because the white can make it a little bit muddy. So now I'm going to pick up, now I have burnt umber on my palette, so I'm going to pick up some burnt umber and some uh, burnt sienna together, come over here and just, when I come back over in that area, I just want to lightly, lightly blend those together. Wipe out my brush a little bit, just kind of lightly brush those together as because it's going to go around and it needs to be a little bit darker as it goes around. Same thing, burnt sienna, a little bit of burnt umber up here. Now this is underpainting. We'll come back and do highlights and a little more detail later. But this, is, this just gets us started. So now I'm going to pick up the same two, burnt sienna, burnt umber. And this time a little bit of blue. So back in here, this is where it's going to be darkest because this is this is back in the shadow. Now if I go over that, it doesn't matter because I'm going to be coming back in and painting out you know, filling in the other pot here in a minute. Bring 
bring that around. Wipe your brush out occasionally. You know, if, if, if you need to, like, blend this a little bit, by wiping out your brush, you're not putting in all of that, that dark. But see how I've kind of got that, that transition from, from sunlit to dark going on? I'm not going to worry about the, well, I could put a little bit of dark in there, which would be burnt sienna and blue just right in here. Most of that's going to have um, plants and stuff over it, so I'm not too, too concerned about that. Rinse out my brush. Now because this one's already in the, the shade, I'll pick up my uh, burnt sienna and blue a little more burnt sienna, maybe a touch of orange. Little hint of, of that's some of the cadmium red there. This just makes a nice soft edge. Same here. This is just underpainting. I keep saying that because people want to finish. They want to finish as they paint. And that, you, you need to have this. Like I said, this is your, I'm picking up some gesso here because this is a little bit grayer from the paint. But you, you need to, to have the, the foundation for your, your painting. And that's what, what this is. The foundation. Picking up some blue. Because this is painted up here. I used the, the burnt sienna and the blue and then I've just added some gesso to that. Maybe a little alizarin crimson. Oop, I need to get a little darker than that because that's going off into the shadows. But, you know, this, this becomes the deeper shadows. This becomes texture. This is important. I'm going to pick up some some burnt sienna on my brush. And I, it's a dirty brush, so it's, it's got some of the white on there. But this is just underpainting. I'm going to have to break here in a second and let this dry. But again, this is blue and, and umber and burnt sienna over here in the in the shaded side you need to get that cool in there if you're painting shadows you've got to have have blues and purples you can even throw a little bit of a lizard and crimson in there if you want so I'm going to cut away now and let this finish this and then I'll let it dry and I'll come back and I'll show you what I'm going to do. So I'll be right back. All right, this is dry enough now that I can work around it. In some of these instances, because I still have things to do on the ground, you can come in and, and wipe out the chalk marks at this point in time. Just make sure that it's dry. You know, those chalk marks just wipe right off. Uh, this was, I was just thinking about the stand that it's on, but I can always come back in and put that in. I like this area here. It's kind of a lost and found area. I'll do something over there to make it a little more found, but not right now. 
coming. I just put a little bit of water on my paper towel here and just wiped out the you know sometimes those lines can be distracting so um, by taking them off you know you, you aren't seeing it with with the lines you're seeing it more as closer to what it's going to look like at the end uh, one of the things I haven't talked about I talk about you you know water on your brush and everything but I haven't talked about consistency uh, when you're using the paint you want the paint to be kind of the consistency of soft butter. You don't want it real wet because if it's too wet, it's thin and it doesn't cover well. If it's too thick, it kind of sticks. So by having it more of a, you know, in that in-between stage of, of like soft butter or margarine or, you know, tubbed margarine or something, it will go on a lot smoother. Now what I want to do before I end this session of, of the pots, I haven't figured out a name for it yet. Um, maybe it's Riding Club Pots, because that's where I took the picture. Uh, I want to do the, the ground. So I'm going to take, again, I use a lot of burnt sienna. I'm going to take my burnt sienna, my orange, yellow and this time I'm going to add just a touch of white to it. My white is my gesso. Bring up my this is my testing thing here. I want to make kind of a sunshine color. So I'm going to add just a little more white, yellow, and orange to that. Just to want a nice, nice warm sunshine. Okay, that I'll test it up here on my here. Um, again, make sure you get your brush good and, and solid, and then take off any excess because this is kind of a still a dry brush. I don't want to lose all of this underpainting that I have. But I do want to have, have a little more sunlight in here. Again, it's just these little curved strokes. I'm kind of rolling the brush back and forth, creating that, that sunlight. Sometimes I'm on the edge, sometimes I'm on the flat part of it. Watch, watch your angles there. That's the bottom of these pots are rounded, so you want to make sure that you don't flatten out the... the bottom of your pot when you're doing this. Take this off, dry brush, that dry brush kind of becomes dappled, you know, like a sun coming through the trees. There's, I'm, I'm now right above me. I've got my my reference photo, and right back in here, there's a little bit of sun. So I'm just going to take take that and just touch that. Those little things are important. They might seem inconsequential, but it gives you a little definition to that that pot. Come in here. As I go down, I'm going to lighten the pressure so that I don't get it too bright down there at the bottom. I can even come in and pick up some just burnt sienna and, and come across there. I'm just blending it in with what I have. That just kind of gives that, that transition between the sunlight and the, the shadow. Just mixing a little more of the yellow and orange and white. Come across here. Try 
try, try not to make straight lines. Straight lines draw the eye. Just picking up some burnt sienna. Blend that in. A lot of this is going to be underneath the, the little stand there. So I want to make sure I get that, that in. Burnt sienna again. And just kind of lighten the pressure on your brush. There's not a lot of, of paint on my brush. By just lightening the pressure. It, it just kind of fades out. Now I want to get that in there. Now I ha ended up with a little alizarin crimson on there, and that's okay. Just pick up a little more yellow, a little more orange and white, and get this, wipe that out so it's not too bright. I can reestablish those edges. That's, that's one of the fun things about acrylics is that you can paint right over something. So, you know, if I, I've kind of lost that edge, I can come back in later and reestablish that edge. I think I'm going to pick up a little bit of burnt sienna, just a little touch of orange. Yeah, I always pick up a little touch of orange, and it's a lot more orange than I want. So, same thing. Just, just, just lightly kind of scrubbing this in there. Take some of that light back in here. Try not to be regimented. That's We're human and we like to put things in order, have it all lined up and, and perfect, and nature just isn't like that. So you have to almost learn to be a little more um, loose and free, as they say. I'm just picking up a little bit lighter version of what I just put on there. So this is just a little bit lighter, just a little more sunshine, wiping out a lot of that. All of these layers that I'm putting on add to your, add to your painting. So this is probably the end of the underpainting and we'll start getting into some of the detail work in the, the next lesson here. So try to get your, your painting up to this point. We'll continue on with the uh, writing club pots. I think that's a good name for it. And just remember to stay safe, to call your friends and family and check in on your neighbors occasionally. Most of all, keep painting, and I hope to see you again in class real soon. Thank you for watching.